All right, hello again. I'm Adam McIntosh, and I'm here today for Music Over Miles, and we're going to do a tutorial on multi-tracking. All right, the word multi-tracking sounds complicated, but it really isn't. It is a multiple of however many tracks that you make, but two plus two is four. It's still four ones, four of the same thing. Right? So, if you think about it, if you make one track and you understand how all of the knobs and dials and buttons, however, there, however many there may be on that one track, if you understand how they all work, then you're just repeating the process. The trouble that you can get into, especially with a digital audio workstation or a DAW, some people will refer to them as, such as GarageBand, is that you have unlimited choices. So where do you stop? Prince famously said, a mix is done when you walk away from it. So keep that in mind when you're setting out to do your first projects. You don't have to put every musical idea you've ever had into the first one, because you're going to make many, many more, and you're going to get better and better at it. So really what you want to do is just understand your form, understand how the platform works, understand what the possibilities are within one track, and then know when to stop. That's really the only place that you can get into trouble with this. And even then, you're not in deep trouble. You just delete it. So like I've said several times in these tutorials, you can't break anything in GarageBand. You should dive in there and have fun. And if you don't like something, there is a, a back or an undo button. And uh, there is also just deleting it, starting over. And sometimes that can be a really good thing. So I'm Adam McIntosh, here for Music Over Miles. Let's dive into this tutorial. And at the end, you're going to know how to multi-track in GarageBand. All right. So we're back here with our module tutorial on multi-tracking. Today is an exciting day because you're going to see that if you know how to do this one time, create a track, after that it is a relatively repetitive process and the only variable is what kind of instrument you're creating. But the tracks work the same. So, we're going to pop open GarageBand. It's going to bring up the last project that I was working on, as it always does for some reason. But we don't need that. We want Come on, there it is, an empty project, right? Just like in the, uh, in the first tutorial, new project, empty project. You can see those highlighted. Select choose. Okay, and this gives us a blank slate, but then it also drops down this menu of options for us to choose a track type. And we went over earlier what a software instrument is, MIDI keyboard of some kind, a microphone that records sounds outside in the world, largely your voice. Connecting a guitar to the interface and then to the computer so that it can translate. And the drums, which are built in to GarageBand, essentially they're samples or loops. Um, they don't look like that, but you don't need to know that. So, <clears throat> uh, you hear sound from the Scarlett 212 USB, and I'm going to show you a photo of what one of these looks like in this tutorial as well, so that you can get an idea of what you're looking for. We'll create our first track, which you know how to do already. Like I said, I always like to start with drums. If you don't have great drums and a great bass player, you, you do not have a great band and you do not have a great song period so the rhythm section is key 
right? And that's why I spend more time on this than anything else. And the result is when I'm done, I like what I've done a lot better. It always sounds better. So I'm just going to give a listen to this Logan Retro Rock uh, on the Retro Rock kit. Uh, we found him under the rock category at, uh, let's change this to 100 beats per minute. We're going to keep it in 4-4. We don't need to do anything wild today. And there's our, our pal Logan. All right. Nice and straightforward, very steady. But no fills, right? Okay, so again, if you have an entire drum track all the way through your song and it just does that, it's going to be very obvious that it's not a real drummer to anyone who's important to you, anyone that you want to hear your song and like it and maybe do something with it. All right? So getting into good habits, we're going to go up here and we're going to save this as multi-tracking. Save it to wherever you want to save it to. I usually drop it on the desktop first and then move it from there. That system's up to you. Okay, now we know that we can continue this drum beat at this tempo if we want to. Let's give it another listen. Okay, at 100 beats per minute, that's good. Okay, I like the way that that feels. And that's the most important part. Do you like the way it feels? That's really the only question you have to ask yourself. If you don't like the way that it feels, change it until you like the way it feels. That's, that's what it's all about, right? Okay, so whenever I go to do a song or a whole, you know, an entire song, right? Uh, the first thing that I do is I go, I'm going to pull this over for a second. I go way over here to this little uh, adjuster. And what this will do is it will it will spread out your tracks for editing later, but it will also squish them down far enough for you to see this little gray area over here. And do you see when the mouse turns into that bar with the two, um, I guess they're arrows, the end marker? What you want to do first is grab this and drag it to the right. What we're doing is we're giving ourselves three or four minutes worth of space to record in. Okay. And this can be something that you start recording and you get to the end of the page and you're just like, whoa, what, how do I get more space? Right. So I've gone way beyond, this is like a five minute song. Okay? Usually I, I go to just about a hundred, um, 105, but now we can go back to this adjuster and squish it all down again. And of course, our drums look more squished, but we know what they are, right? They're the same thing that we just listened to. Okay, so <clears throat> do we like the sound of the drums? Let's check out what that kick could do. Too busy for me. All right. That was kind of cool. So, again, use your looping mechanism here to get the drum feel that you want for the overall song. And then we can adjust these sections one by one later on. And I am just on AM Gold, the first beat preset under Logan's category. And I haven't even changed drum sets yet. So let's hear Detroit Garage. Okay, 
Okay, a little thinner. Four on the floor. I actually kind of like that. Let's see what happens if we turn the kick up. Nice, and then let's match that with the hi-hats. And then we're gonna put some percussion in here, so I'm gonna turn this up too, so it's at the same volume. I'm gonna leave it wide open. I don't wanna compress it at all yet. And I do know that I want it to be a little brighter, so let's listen to that. Okay, we got it here. Okay, but we lost a little bit of that kick. So let's bring it back down. And right now it's in a dry room, no reverb at all. So let's open up the room just a little bit. Okay, and we're still losing that kick when we do that. So I'm gonna bring it back down. That's better. Okay, I kinda dig that. What else can we do with it? So if we go back over here to our scissors, it'll bring us back to this page where we can manipulate the drums themselves. All right, spend the most time on drums. I told you I was going to. So let's hear the hand claps. You can never really hear them rock because you have to put these on a separate panel. And the tambourine. All right, that all sounds pretty chintzy to me. I like the hand claps though, in that simple form. All right, so we've got a good sort of baseline to start on. We know our tempo, we have a drum beat that we like. And we have, let's see, let's make this a little bit louder here. Not so much that it makes that snare ring. Hear that snare ringing? Okay, that can be really hard to deal with later on. So we want that nice dry snare. That's good. All right. Now what happens if we simplify it? It's got the same feel, but it has a little bit more space, right? Space is good because you can add other instruments when we start multi-tracking, which is what we're going to start doing right now. All right. I don't know about you, but I like this. It feels good. Okay, so let's take this looping function off now and we're going to give ourselves a good stretch of drums and you don't have to do this plus button every time what i like to do is get four of them so that you know you've got an even amount one two three four five six seven eight All right so four and four bars makes eight and then so you've got you know eight here eight here eight here and eight here if you select them all and do control copy, go to 33, and paste them. It'll go a lot faster. Now the one thing you wanna watch for when you do this pasting of drums is where you just pasted it at. It looked like I got it right on 33, but you always wanna check it with this little squeezer right here. Because if it's off, by the tiniest bit, you you won't be able to find it later. You just won't know what's wrong with your song. So check it while you're doing it the first time, and you won't have that problem later. All right, so now we have four, but we could have eight. Right. So let's copy that. And we're at 129. Okay, so I don't think we're gonna need eight more rounds of drums for this particular session. We've got four on the floor by Logan, 
on uh, in what is considered a rock kit. And uh, we've done a little bit of an adjustment to it here to get it to sound pretty straightforward and simple. Uh, but we really haven't done anything extra special. We don't know where the chorus is going to fall or where any of the parts of the songs are going to fall yet. So but right now, this is our metronome. Rather than listening to this click right here every time we record, which is super annoying, we get to record to drums. Okay, so let's go and create a new track. Oh, what kind of track are we going to create next? And what did we talk about just a second ago? The rhythm section, right? The rhythm section is key. If you don't have good drums and bass, you don't have a good band, you don't have a good song. And I'm going to show you how true that is. <laughs> All right. I want to hear my instrument as I play and record. So we're going to hear that through the speaker. It's going to go into input two and it's going to come out of our Scarlet. So we're going to create a guitar or bass, so you can do either on this audio channel. We'll create that. And the first thing it's going to bring up is a guitar amp, right? But if we go over here, we'll see that we have bass options. We have clean bass, and we have crunch bass, and we have experimental bass, which we don't really need right now. What a song needs most of all is a clean bass that can really move the chord progression, right? Now that might be a little bit more theoretical, but if say a song is going from A to G to D, and that is really the core of the song, you really want to have a bass line underneath it that's hitting on those notes to support the whole section. I prefer this 60s combo. And when I do that, you see it changes to this bass amp, right? And you get this bass amp over here. All right, so now we've got this 60s combo. And we've got more options down here. Okay. Um, this one here is the most important for me. And that is whether we want it to sound like an amplifier or we want it to sound like a DI. And DI stands for direct, which means it is plugged directly into this recording studio, this virtual recording studio. Back in the day, it was, it was plugged directly into the board. And the board was what was amplifying the signal. Right? But if we want it to sound like an, an amp, then that means that we've got a microphone in front of it, and we put it over this way, <clears throat> and we're miking the cabinet. Okay, the cabinet is this part. So we would have a little microphone right here, and it would be uh, ideally really expensive, and we'd have to have an engineer for it, and yada, 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 like I said. <clears throat> but this, this knob right here can be quite powerful in getting you a very clean and punchy uh, bass sound. All right, so let's leave it in the middle for a second and plug in a bass. Now when I say I'm gonna plug in a bass, I mean that I'm gonna plug a bass into the Scarlet interface into input two. And when I do, we're going to hear some bass. All right. So if you don't hear bass when you plug it in, check that this little input monitoring button is pressed. If you want to be able to hear what you're doing, because you won't be able to play along with the drums if you can't hear them. So, <clears throat> this is what our bass sounds like right now, right? Okay, so it's already a pretty strong sound, tonally.
right? It's got sustain. So <clears throat> we're going to keep this really simple so we can get more tracks in. When I click this record button, it's going to count me in one, two, three, four before the drums come in. So I know where to start recording. All right, so I'm going to do a really simple stretch uh, of about to here. And let's say we use the E string and we tune it first. Make sure that it's actually an E. Those 30 cents can be a huge difference later on when you're rocking this in your car. All right. What are cents? Cents are the micro distances of something being out of tune in between D sharp and D or C sharp and D or D sharp and E. Okay, so our G is a little flat. Let's get that up here. I recommend very strongly that you make this a habit because if you record the best guitar track of your life and then you find out that it's a quarter of a step out of tune, you're going to be really bummed out. Okay, so let's say that we're going to do something in E and we're going to do that pretty simply. I'm going to listen to the playback of the bass here for a second. And I'm going to pay close attention to the kick drum. So just for an example, we have something, and you're going to notice a change in the tone of the bass, because at first I was playing it with my finger, which is a very whole tone, and now I'm going to be playing it with a pick, which is a little more snappy. All right, so let's just feel this out. I like that A bend up to the B. So I can take this and eliminate it and go right back to it. All right, oh, I just did that one time to save time in this video. I strongly recommend that you learn how to play your instrument because anything that's copied or sampled or looped is gonna sound copied or sampled or looped. It's not gonna sound live. And you're already in a, a digital environment. You're already in a digital representation of sound. So <laughs> the more natural and real that you can be, the better. That being said, for the sake of saving time, I'm going to stretch this out a little bit. I'm going to pull it right back to the eighth bar. 
we're going to, it is selected, but we're going to select it. We're going to copy it and we're going to paste it here. Now we're going to check our edit, right? Because we have this odd thing happening here. Does it sound good? Perfect. Okay. Now we have a, an okay bass sound, right? It's not fantastic. But let's check out that amp DI. So this is over to the direct line in sound. Even more rattly, which can be cool, right? And let's listen to the amp sound. Oh yeah, it's buttery. And if we add a little bit of lows, No compression, don't need it right now. Let's hear that again. All right, and we don't need distortion just yet, <laughs> later. All right, so now we have two, right? Like I said before, let's copy those just for the sake of saving time. Always perform your music and We'll double it. Okay, so we'll go about to there. And then I want to keep all this stuff where I can see it. All right, so we have a good sounding set of drums and a decent sounding bass line. All right. These drums Okay, they sound cool for right now. All right, so what do you put in after you have drums and bass, right? So the evolution of the band from it being a guitar player and a singer to adding a drum set and loud big bands where you couldn't hear an acoustic guitar and then coming up with the idea of electrifying the guitar and electrifying the bass brought the drummer, the bass player, and the electric guitar together to form the power trio. So we're going to go back to track. We're going to do a new track. And we're going to tell it what kind we want, connect a guitar or bass. So we already did the bass. Now we're going to do a guitar track. Input 2, I want to hear my instrument, and the Scarlet 212 USB. All right, now you'll see this happening right away. When I unplug this instrument, it'll stop for a second, but as soon as I plug it back in, you'll see that noise happening again. That noise is something called amp noise, and it's pretty common when you plug into a real amplifier I, I get that they wanted to make this as authentic as possible, but I do not know why on earth they left amp noise in. Because then all you have to do, or, or something that you have to do, is go down here to the noise gate and cut the noise out. It's dumb, but you have to do it. Okay, so there's that. Now our guitar track is here. And our bass is down here. Oh no, I'm confused. You can move it. Okay, everything's just like it was. All right, so now if we look over here at guitars, we have a ton of options. So there are a lot more options for guitars than there are for basses. You have to be a little bit more crafty to make your bass sound good in, uh, in GarageBand 
and and really in any uh, you know DAW digital audio workspace. But there are some pretty decent sounds in here. Uh, the of the clean guitars, uh, I really do like the country gent. All right, that one's good, and that's not even cranked up or anything yet with no effects on it. And the country gent also sounds good. And uh, if I need it, some tremolo or you know, spinning speaker where you can hear the speaker doing kind of a tremolo or spinning. All right, so that can be pretty cool too. But my favorites are in crunch guitar. And my favorites over here are the cheap studio time. I love this little amp. And the chord burner's good. Heartbroken. Okay, now look at all that noise, right? Why? But you just go to the noise gate over here and you pull it out, right? It's silly. But then Heartbroken has this really cool sound. Now you're gonna hear that noise come back when the guitar is making a signal. And that's supposed to sound cool, right? Uh, old School Punk sounds great, and Razor Face sounds great. Okay, good. So, let's go back to Heartbroken or see uh, studio time and I want to show you uh, one of my favorite things about guitars already in GarageBand guitar sounds already in here and this is of course for people who have a bass who have a guitar who know how to play or I have a friend who knows how to play right if you don't have this stuff there's there's other things that you can do but this little button down here will give you all of these amps. So you can go to the clean amps and look at all those amps. <laughs> it's crazy. You can go to the crunch amps and look at all those different kinds of amps. And then the heavily distorted amps up to like turbo octane. All right, so clean is gonna be like we heard, you know, classic country, country gentleman, a clean country reverb. It's going to look something like this, and it's going to be exactly that. Nice and clean. Right? Now, that is absolutely necessary sometimes, but in this little riff rocky type thing that we have going on, we're going to go for a crunch amp sound. And what I'm looking for is a tweed or uh, a brown face or a silver face or something along those lines all right so let's see what we've got here designer tweed crunch okay oh that's pretty cool all right lots of reverb there you can see that you can adjust all this stuff right here and it's kind of awesome. All right, so we can turn the reverb off. We can turn the tremolo on and off, but I don't really like the sound of the sand much. 
let's go to crunch and see what this small brown face sounds like okay let's try to bring the gain up a little all right still a little too thin for my tastes so let's look at distorted and see Ooh, what is this all right a little too blown out i like the sound of it but you can go through these all day long and this is what i talked about in the intro when do you stop right because you are all feeling like okay is this guy just gonna play play guitar sounds all day right and i could uh it would be it would be really annoying and a waste of your time and so the best thing to do is to go through spend a an hour or two and and click on you know the ones that you like the names of you know try small tweed distortion okay <laughs> see if you like that one and if you do make a note of it right like a make a mental note now there are ways to save these settings too I'm not going to get into that right now but if we get the silver face okay this will do great and then what we've got here is we've got the model right lots of options the amp is a large blackface amp and like i said silver face mini blackface these are all great amp sounds and this is called amp modeling that's what it's referred to the cabinet is this thing over here and right now it's got one 12 inch speaker in it that's not a lot right so we could change this to have a silver face and two 12 inch speakers in it yeah and listen to the difference all right also this little microphone that's right here is a condenser 87 do we know what that is no and it's a big complicated um, history of <laughs> the naming of microphones that we don't need to get into but you can change it and you can see if you like the sound of different microphones kind of like that one so this thing that popped up when I moused over it is where in front of the speaker cone do you want that microphone to be and that's really cool a lot of people say the outer edge is the best spot for it a lot of people say right in the center is the best spot for it and then of course you have people that say no everyone's wrong it's right there guess who's right you are <laughs> so whichever one you like the best is where you put that and you can position your microphone so that's enough customization I'm gonna turn the output on this up a little bit and then I'm gonna go back over here to the gain I'm gonna crank that up a tiny bit We've got the reverb off right now, but I'm just gonna bring it down to two, turn the reverb on. We're not gonna have any of the tremolo effects working, so we're gonna leave all of these off. The presence, how present is the amp, the presence of it. And the master volume, right? So you hear that buzz go up. And now we start to get this really cool sound. I still think that's a little bit too much reverb. So, how do we find this thing? Again, it was right here. Okay. Fully adjustable for all the guitars you're ever gonna do. The second button that's important is the open pedal board. And I'm not gonna spend anywhere near as much time in here as I did 
on the amps. But you can grab these pedals and pull them into this section and turn them off and on. Obviously, that's way too much distortion. So we're going to put that back there. But let's check out Candy Fuzz. Okay, that's also kind of a, a lot. High drive, the treble boost. We'll give you that. And this delay will give you that slap back delay, which is really cool. You can hear what a chorus pedal will do to it. If you change the rate and depth and adjust these pedals, you'll get even more of stuff like that. I kind of outgrew that a long time ago, but what I do like is a graphic EQ. And I don't think we're going to use any echo on this one. So we'll leave that like it is. And then we'll take our equalizer and we'll give it the tones we want. So we've got this right now. Let's grab the mids and a little bit of the highs and then give it a little bit more low and see what that sounds like. All right, sounding pretty great. You also have presets over here. Oh my gosh, look at all these presets. Okay, so this, again, learn what sounds you like so you're not wasting everybody else's time when you're working together with them, right? Uh, you've got octaves here, you have fifths here. There's so much fun stuff in here. Complete pedal boards. It will give you whole pedal boards that are designed by people who work for Apple, um, Stomp Bop Banks. And you can save these settings later on. Okay, so we still have a lot of noise, right? Boom, gone. Okay, so cheap studio time is set up. Let's get a little bit of it going with this and see what it sounds like. So a little bit of improvisation there, thinking uh, that then I may like that, right? Maybe I will, maybe I won't. If I don't, I can use this trimming tool and go back to just the riff. <laughs> All right. Now again, to save time, not so that you are not a good performer. I'm going to copy and paste this to here and here. And look, we're multi-tracking. <laughs> All right. So again, like I said, it's the same thing track by track. It's just different sounds and different instruments of what you're putting in. All right. So the last one that I'm going to do is a keyboard track. And I'm going to use uh, a MIDI. So when I go to make this track here and it opens the drop down window for a new track, I am going to use a MIDI keyboard that I have that's very small. It's a Key Station 49. I'm not trying to sell anybody stuff here, but it's a Key Station 49 and it's got uh, 49 keys. 
All right, so the first thing that this always brings up is the classic electric piano, which is cool, right? But it's not really gonna fit with what we're playing, right? So <clears throat> because I know these really well and I've been working with them for a long time, I know that a clavinova is going to sound nice and bitey and kind of funky in here on an E. Just got to figure out which one. Let's see, 70s clav. All right, let's try it and see what happens. Go back to the beginning. Was it great? No, it wasn't the greatest thing in the world, but it was kind of cool. Um, do we not like the 70s clav sound? Well, let's check out what it does for a second. We can change it to pick up B and C. We can give it more treble. We can make it more brilliant. We can turn the low position up if it lets me. Come on, you know you want it. Oh, come on. There we go. All right. Now let's <clears throat> look at these buttons really quickly here. This is a speaker with a line through it, and it says mute. So if we don't want to hear the drums, we mute them. If we only want to hear the drums, we solo them. And this is what that sounds like. Only drums. Everything else. No drums, and just the clav, the bass, and the guitar. All right, so I don't think I got the swing of this until about the middle. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take this portion and listen to it with just my instrument so I can hear what it sounded like. So let's solo this and see if we like the sound of it with everything else. It still doesn't have the bite that I want it to have. So let's look at a B3 organ and go to classic rock organ. We can change this and here's why. This is MIDI. Okay, so if we expand this out, what we're going to see is my completely unrehearsed and unwritten MIDI dots. My little MIDI paddles in here that make up what I was playing, right? I did something intentional in there for you to hear. This is called pulling out all the stops. You ever hear somebody say that? Pulling out all the stops. 
Pulling out all the stops means pulling all the stops all the way out and getting kind of the most raucous sound that you can out of the church organ. All right, very cool. Can anybody catch what I did there that's different? That's right. When I hit my G and went to A, I played an A minor. But it's not an A minor. It's an A major. Okay, so let's say you do a whole take and you get, you know, all the way to 100. And you realize that you played an A minor instead of uh, an A major. Okay, so you don't have to panic. What you can do is, and I do recommend going back and doing it correctly first, but you have the ability to edit MIDI. All right, so where are my A minor chords? Right there. Okay. So an A minor is made up of an A, a C, and an E. If you hover over the notes, it will tell you this is an E, this is an A, and this is a C. But an A major has a C sharp. Now listen to that. Right, and that's more like what we were trying to do, right? Okay, so <clears throat> everywhere that this instance happens, I can select those, copy it, scroll over to where it belongs, drop it out, drop it in, I need to move it over a little bit. Let's see. That seemed kind of too soon. All right. Okay. I don't like these to be perfect, especially organ lines. Some people will get real meticulous about this and move all of these paddles to exactly the edge. Um, uh, there's just no life in that, right? It's got to be a little bit off, I find, for it to sound cool. So let's see what we've got. All right. We'll select this, copy it, go back to the beginning of the song. Actually, let's wait and have this come in here. Yeah, that's even cooler. All right. Okay, so now we're going to unmute everything else by unsoloing the classic rock organ. All right. So another cool thing that you can do in a lot of uh, rock and roll is to take the bass out at the beginning or have the bass start the song. So let's listen to which one we like better. So, we have multi-tracked. If you don't have a MIDI controller that has a keyboard on it that you can play, you can go down here and look at this little keyboard here. And if you know your music just a little bit, you can say, you can see where all the C's are. If this is C, this has to be D, right? And let's say you've got this E note on the bottom, but you'd like, well, let's say you don't have any notes at all. You want this E note, you want this, oh, I'm sorry, you want this uh, B note, you want this E note, I'm looking at it sideways, and you want this G sharp note. 
Okay, so you're going to add those by doing this. You're going to get the cursor on the note that you want. So let's grab another B. And we're going to press down on Control. And it's going to allow us to create a note. Dig it. Dig it. Okay, so now we have this high-pitched B on top of our low B. And let's solo that for a second just to hear what that sounds like. That's nice. All right. So you can go through and add notes wherever you want in here. And it will take a while to do this and do this complicated thing. So I think if you do this, you know, two or three times, you'll probably get a, a, a paper route or <laughs> find some way to earn some money and get one of these cheap controllers. Again, like I said, get them at pawn shops. People buy them and don't use them all the time. And so they're, you know, they've never been used or used once, and um, you can get them for half the price. Okay, so now we have multi-tracked. And after this, it's the same process. You're going to create a new track. You're going to tell GarageBand what kind of track it is. We haven't done this one yet. And then you're going to track whatever it is you're going to track on this audio track. Let's say it's a vocal. And then you're going to learn how to manipulate that vocal down here so that you can make it sound as good as possible. I showed you how to make good sounding drums. There's a lot more to it. So explore, experiment, right? make mistakes. The more mistakes you make, the faster you are learning. Okay. So, and you will also be able to, once you find sounds that you really like, save them under user patches. Adam, Adam leads and harmonies, Adam main vocals. So, um, let's say we were going to do a vocal right here. Okay. My mic is very close to the speaker, so I'm going to be very careful here with this and kind of turn it down. Let's see. See if it feeds back. Okay. Check one, two. Now, because I'm not using headphones, you're going to hear the speaker go back into the microphone. And it's like I talked about in earlier tutorials when you're getting what's called blood on the tracks. The tracks are bleeding into one another. So this is not a track that we would keep, but I'm just going to give you an example of something that you could do uh, vocally and then what you can do to those vocals all right so So, obviously, zero effort there, and not what I typically do. But we have a vocal track of some kind. Okay, now it doesn't really stand out from this, right? We've got compression, we've got a low EQ, a mid, a high, the lows are cut. We have some reverb and some ambiance right here, but what else could we do to this to make it sound cooler? If you click on this little button right here, plugins, you're going to see a whole lot of cool stuff up here. One of them is your master echo, and echo is just like it sounds. If you yell in a hallway, your voice will echo. So we're going to solo this. And listen to, I'm going to turn the echo up really loud so that you can hear the effect. Turn this mic off. And turn the volume of this up because we're not going to get feedback now. I can't take myself seriously. 
Okay. I'm singing into a tutorial. Okay. So let's bring that back a little because it's a little, a little bit overblown. I can't take myself seriously. All right. But then if we crank up the reverb, we get something that sounds like you're singing in a, a big church. I can't take myself seriously. I'm singing into a tutorial. Okay. Um, <clears throat> and then We're gonna look really quickly at something called EQ. Now I'm not gonna go far into this, but I'm gonna show you one thing and it's gonna give you the overview of how all equalization works. Okay. Here it goes. I can't take myself seriously. I'm singing into a tutorial. Right? So what did I do there? I boosted 1K. Then I dragged it across 2K, 5K. Right? Do you need to know what that means? No. You just need to listen to it and figure out how much is too much. This is too much. This, maybe not too much. Let's listen. I can't take myself seriously. I'm singing into a tutorial. All right, now the vocals are standing out on top of our mix, right? And those controls, everything has EQ, everything has controls. Those controls, all this stuff down here, does different things to each instrument. You can turn them off. Noise gate, we don't want to turn off because we turned, that was why we turned that on in the first place. It was so loud. The pedal board that's making all the effects, you can turn it off. You can access it by doing this. Oh yeah, there's my EQ. Okay, great. And you can switch it to a different thing, whatever you want it to be. Uh, modulation, pitch, EQ. What are these things? That's for you to discover and find out what you like the best. Try everything. Like I said, you can't break it. This is multi-tracking, right? You make one track. What goes over here is what's different. <clears throat> and then how you handle it and how you process it is really the only change because we created a new track. We told GarageBand what it was going to be. And then we hit create. And sure enough, another track popped up, right? So. <laughs> these things are so ridiculous to me all right so we're going to finish it up here with um you know that band that has a lead guitar player who's always playing lead over everything including the vocals but we need way more distortion It's because that person is, is generally ridiculous. <laughs> okay, there we go.
right, man. I told you not to play lead over me singing, but you did it anyway. All right, so you have so much to discover. And don't cheat. Record your whole bass part, right? Uh, because if you don't, and you don't record good bass parts, or you record bass parts that are not on with the drums, you'll get things like this. So wrong. You just don't want to do that. So, play your parts, learn to play your instruments, play as well as you can. Don't try to play any better when you're recording. Make sure that your ends match up if you are doing any splicing, especially with drums. And like in the last tutorial, you can always put in fills here by changing these. And you can also completely change a drum beat. Um, you can't change a drummer, but you can completely change a drum beat by going here, going to your skizzers, and choosing a different thing to, for it to do completely. Let's say we're going to put it on still water. All right, so lots to do, and in the next tutorial. I'm going to show you how to take all of these components, all of these elements that are now separate but synchronized, they're all playing at the same time in some kind of synchronicity, and turn them into a, a good sounding MP3 file that you could share, you can put on your phone, you can plug it into the car stereo, drive around town and listen to yourself because that is super cool. Okay, we saved it, multi-tracking. We know Cheap Studio Time was our rhythm guitar. Classic rock organ is what we decided on. Big Brute Blues. Oh, vocals one. Who's that? Okay. So this is that vocalist that I hired named Dave, who was terrible. And we fired him, and we had someone else come in. Um, do not use. Okay. So <clears throat> make sure you keep notes like this or Dave will wind up on your record. Cool. That is multi-tracking, and in GarageBand on a stable system, you can make about 20 of these and be able to scroll up and down and see them and keep track of them. As soon as you get to 20, 25 of them, the hard drive's gonna start you know, choking and, and not keeping up with uh, being able to do playback and recording. So, again, you have unlimited choices, but Use them sparingly. All right? That's it, and I will see you in the next tutorial. Looking forward to it. This has been real fun.